In this part, we're gonna add UI and levels to our game. So let's get started by going to our scenes folder. And in the scenes folder, let's create another scene and we'll call it start. This is gonna be the start scene of our game. And in the start scene, what I wanna do is go to UI and add an image. It's just gonna be a white image that I'm gonna have in the background. And when I'm working in UI, I actually like to work in the game view instead. So let's go inside the game view and you can see the image is right here in the corner. Now I want to stretch this image covering the whole window here. And to do that, what I can do is click on this icon right here, holding all down on the keyboard. I can click on this icon to stretch it in both horizontal and vertical. So this is gonna be our background. And now I want to add some text. So let's go to UI text. This is going to be our start game text. So I'll just name it like that. And the text is also going to have start game. I'll increase the width to 800 and the height to 100. In the text settings, I want to increase the font size to 80. And also for alignment, I want to center it. For the font type, if we click right now, you can see that there's only one font that we have here. And I want to add a Roboto font. We'll create a folder called fonts. You can download the font that you want to use, but right here I have a Roboto font. I'll add the folder here. And now if I select start game again and go to fonts, we have more options and I want to use the thin version. So this one right here, that looks pretty good, but there's one thing that I like to change in the UI. So currently if I make the screen bigger like this, you can see that the size of the text is still the same. And if you want your UI to scale with the size of the screen, what you can do is go to canvas and right here for UI scale mode, currently it's set to custom pixel size. You can switch to scale with screen size and you can choose either to use width or height for your scaling. So I'm gonna use the height and now the window gets bigger, the UI also gets bigger, and I just like it like that. Now what I want to do for the start scene is when you click on the screen to start the next level. And the way we can create that is by selecting this image. Let's actually rename it to UI background. And for this game object, I'm going to add a component, a script machine, and I'll select embedded. Go to added graph. We're not going to use these units, uh, let's remove them. And the unit that we're going to use is on mouse input. And in here we have a choice of selecting which button we're listening for and what type of action. So what I want to do here is load my first level. And for that, we're going to use scene manager load scene. But for this one, I'm not going to use the scene name. Instead, I'm going to use scene build index and I'll show what that is in a little bit. And for the scene build index, I'm going to pass in one. And also I'll explain this in a little bit. And that is it for our logic. Now let's go to our assets and go to our scenes and let's rename our simple scene to level one. And now we want to add these two scenes into our game. The way you do that is go into file, build settings. And right here at the top, we can see scenes in build. Currently it's empty. We can add our start scene and then a level one. And right here on the right, we have build index zero and one. And that's why I was using one for the build index that I wanted to load. We can close that and test out our start scene. So now if I click on the screen, you can see that the game starts and we can play our level. The level one is not really much of a level. So let's go fix that. Let's select level one. But before you start copying the obstacles and the coins, what you want to do is create some prefabs. So let's create a folder, call it prefab. And the prefab is a saved configuration of a game object. So if we want all of our coins to be configured just like we have it in the scene, what we can do is drag this coin into the assets folder and that will create a prefab. Now, if we use the prefab in our scene, so for instance, we duplicate this prefab now, at any point, if you want to modify how our coin looks or how it behaves, what we can do is actually make those changes on the prefab. So for instance, let's scale it in X axis by two. And as soon as we make that change on the prefab, you can see that both of those coins in our scene actually got modified. So that is the benefit and it works the same for the logic as well. Now for this coin, I used an embedded source and although it's gonna work right now without a problem, it is recommended to use graphs instead of embedded for a prefab because some of the logic won't actually update correctly. And like in our case, since we already created an embedded graph, what you can do is actually convert it to a graph. So click convert right here. I'll just name the asset coin graph, click save. And that switched our source to graph and created that file for us. 
So if we select these coins, you can see that updated here as well. And we shouldn't have problems with our graphs now. So let's also make a prefab for our obstacle, for our finish line, and for our player. For the player, we actually created a graph, so we don't have to do any conversions here. Let's actually create a ground as a prefab as well. But for the other objects, if we're not going to be changing anything with them between the levels, we can just keep them as they are. But in case if we want to change anything with our camera or light in all of our scenes, what we can do is create another empty game object and call this level base. Now we can add these three objects inside here. And from this, we can create a prefab that can be used in all of our levels. The scene variables are meant to be unique per scene. So we're going to leave that as a regular game object. Now let's make some changes here. Select this obstacle and add some obstacles around. And these coins, we can move them around so that they will be easier to collect. Some like that. A very simple first level. Let's save this level. Go to assets and to our scene. Select the level right here and we can duplicate this level by hitting Ctrl D. That creates a duplicate and it actually increments the level one to level two. Let's go to level two now. To make the level design a little bit easier, you can actually change your view. So we can click on this Y to actually look from the top. And if we click on the center right here, it's going to switch from perspective to orthographic. So now we're in orthographic view and we can start creating our level like this from the top view. So let's move the finish line a little bit further, make our level longer. And then we can hold this square down to move in both axes. When you're holding an object, you can click Ctrl D and it will create a duplicate of that object and leave it at the place where you're holding it. So it's a fast way that you can create your scene like that. Let's do the same thing with coins. So add some coins here, save level and let's duplicate one more time to create level three, open level three, move the finish line even further back. If you have any difficulty of selecting that object, the ground always gets selected. One of the options we have here is to block selection. So right here in a hierarchy, if we click on this icon, we're no longer will be able to select the ground. So that might help you. We can hold down shift to select more than one item. Also, you can scale the obstacles and the logic is still gonna work. So that is also an option. But let's just call that good for our level three. Click save and we are done with our levels. Now we can go to file, build settings and add the two levels that we just created. We can select more than one, add those in. And now we have more levels that we can play. Now I haven't added the logic of loading the next level. So let's go ahead and do that right now. And since we're using prefabs and graphs, if we're going to make a change in one level, the change is going to be made to all levels as well. So let's go edit graph. And in the previous part, what we did after we hit the finish line was just restart the level. And now we want to change that to loading the next level. So we can use the same approach, scene manager load scene by build index. And the way we can load the next level is by incrementing our build index because our build index is actually incrementing with uh, levels. So we'll use that to load our next level. Let's get active scene first. And from this scene, we'll get build index. And to this index, we're going to add one and pass it in for our load scene. We can close that, go to our start scene and test out the game. So click on the screen and we start with the first level. Let's get those coins. We can go to the next one. And after we complete the fourth one, you can see that we get an error because build index four does not exist. So to avoid the error, what we can do is duplicate our start scene and make an end scene out of it. Let's open the end scene and in here for text, let's just call it text. And for text, we're just going to say thanks for playing. Now, currently, since we duplicate the start, if you click on the screen, it's going to go back to level one and let's change it to actually quit the game. So we can remove that load scene and look for application quit. So now if you click on the end scene, it's going to quit the game. But one more thing that we want to add is actually display the coin count right here at the top. And for the change to be applied to all the levels, I'm actually going to use the level base. One way we can go and modify a prefab is by clicking this arrow right here and it goes inside of our prefab. If you want to get out, you can click this arrow right there and it's going to go back to your scene. So let's go inside of our prefab and inside here, let's add an image for the image source. Let's actually select one of the default images here, this knob and change the color of it to yellow, something like our coin. Let's switch the UI scale mode to scale with screen size and switch it to use the height. Now I want to position this image in the top left corner. 
so we can just use that and for the width I'm gonna set it to 50 by 50 something like that and now let's add a UI text inside of our image we're gonna align it to left and then set position X to 140 for the height let's set it to 60 and position it in the center for the font size I think 30 will do put some numbers here so that's how it's gonna look and we can switch our font to Roboto light something like that that looks a little bit better and I think we can go and add some logic for changing the value so let's add script machine switch to embedded add a graph and in here I want to set text of our text object so let's find set text and I'll do it on start and also on update now for the text I need to pass in the amount of coins we have collected and if you remember from the last part we have it in the saved variables currently it's at 16 so we can add that variable to our graph but since our variable is an integer we need to convert it to a string so we want to look for integer to string unit that gives us a string output and we can use that for our input for our set text we can save it click play and test it out so right there we have a coin count and it increases each time we pick up an item but we're still getting that error from our level three and it's because we have not added the end scene to our build settings add the end scene in and that should fix that problem now a couple things that i want to do before we try building this game is go back to assets prefabs select our player and for the player i think the forward speed is a little bit too fast so i want to decrease it to 18 and that should change the forward speed of our player in all of our levels one more thing I want to add is some fog and the way we can add fog is go to window rendering lighting go under environment and right here we have an option for fog for the color I want it to be our background color so it's gonna blend in with the background and I think I'll increase the density that looks pretty good now if you go to our scenes and select level 2 you can see that the settings are different here so I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing here as well save it and do the same thing for our level 3 save that and now the way you can build and test the game is by going to build settings right here I have a Windows platform currently selected build and run you can create a folder builds and just build it inside there and after the game is built it will run and you can test it out so right there we successfully have built the game I'm still gonna make some bonus parts for this series and in one of them I actually want to add the scene transition so if you're interested in that make sure you subscribe and turn on the notifications so you get notified once I post that out I hope you guys enjoyed this mini series and that you found it helpful click on that like button write in the comments what you thought about it and I'll see you in the next one